it has been a quiet journey for Bwana Moses for a whole 21 years 14 years on uh, keeping cows and 8 actively years on dairy farming uh, we came to know about Moses uh, about 2 years ago by that time uh, uh, he had some challenges here and there as he had said about the whole journey and what we'll hear from him that's when we came to, to learn about him we also have a journey to share about uh, this farm and how you have interacted with him. He promised us to take us through the whole journey of 21 years. And here he is. As you can see also the cows after milking, they are well relaxed. So Bona Moses, Thank welcome so and Sunday. share our, your journey for the 21 years. And maybe you have like a brief session to, 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 to introduce yourself and what you normally do here in the farm. Well, um, again, House of Hope Dairy Farm, uh, part of the House of Hope School. We are located in Siokimau. Um, we've been here for 21 years now. Our school uh, helps uh, children from various places in the country get an education. It's a purely sponsorship-based school. And um, 21 years ago, as one of the ways that we started to try and help ourselves uh, reduce costs, we bought one cow. And uh, we brought the cow to this farm. Uh, that was courtesy of my late mother. And uh, she wanted at least a sikuwe kila kitu ni kununua. Kataka kakuwe at least na kangombe kakukamua. And uh, we can say that's where our dairy farm started. And uh, so the essence was feeding ourselves. And I think that's what most dairy farmers on Akuanga Nayo. You want first we start off with can I have something for myself and my family? Maybe my neighbor I can sell something, come and can access, and then from there we can have uh, something maybe to sell to the cooperative or to more customers. So that's how we started off 21 years ago, and two decades later, here we are. So the whole inspiration came from uh, the school. You needed milk for the school, not for business purpose. Yes, actually that was a major thing because uh, when we came here, we were actually about seven kilometers from the highway. We had very few homes here, very, very few homes. So even our neighbors, rarely would they have milk. So we'll have to send somebody all the way seven kilometers to Mombasa Road to get milk. And so we said, if we have our own cow, we can have milk. And you can see how much we didn't know about cows, the fact that we bought one cow to give us milk for the entire school all year round. So we didn't even understand about lactations and uh, the concepts of breeding. But as I said, everything starts kutoka pali mtu anaanza na pole pole tukaendelea kujifundisha so the whole inspiration came from or the whole urge to start a dairy farm was the distance aspect from where you'll go and uh, buy milk from and also the school yes, yes, yes. i have just a small question yeah did you even factor in the cost of buying v milk versus the cost of producing your own milk Oh, Considering it's just one cow, it will get pregnant, the production will go down, at some point we'll have no milk. Were those factors considered? Not at all. I think we just knew that if you have a cow, the cow will give us milk. And as I said, that's how we usually have information, lack of information. Most people will look at some of these things from a very basic point, that I just need milk, and if I have a cow on my, uh, on my farm, I can always get milk. Would, so you just started with an already lactating cow? Yes. Maziwa had, kwanza, maziwa pap. Ilifika hivi, tukakamua. And everyone was very happy. Na tukajua, kumbe this thing is not difficult. Ni kitu ni raisi. Then what, what, uh, maziwa. Then what happened uh, next? Um, actually that cow was a decent cow. And I think because of being a decent cow, and it was uh, producing maybe about 20, 20, 20 liters. That is in year 2000. Yes. You had a cow that was yes, doing 20 we got, liters. Yes, we got her from Kinangop. From Kinangop. Yes. Was it housed zero grazed or you had just... Uh, Actually, it would uh, go out a little bit. We had made for it somewhere. Like it will go... This, because there were not very many people around. It will go pahali kuna kanyasi hivi na kula. And she was producing 20 liters. And it never occurred to us that the milk goes reducing. So we kept looking and wondering like... Yes, we knew naturally she will reduce milk. But that's when it's occurring to us that, oh, maybe we need another one. Kushikilia wakati huyu, mazui menda chini. And remember that time, she's not even inseminated. She comes on heat. We don't even really know much about, like, uh, where do we even start? 
They don't have uh, ni, a huko ni huko hakuna watu hakuna watu wa AI na vitu kama hizo hiyo wakati so what we we'll end up doing we look for our neighbors uh, had some Maasai cows so we brought the bull and subsequently because of that we just went reducing the genetic potential as we kept doing that so three or four years down the line when the first cow which came it got too old and too weak because it was already aged when it came the ones that it left behind could not produce like the mother so we moved from saying we used to have a cow that used to produce 20 liters to cows that were barely producing 5 liters because it's a beef dairy cow exactly. cross ilikuwa ni zebu ile wa masai tumeshikanisha sasa na yetu ilikuwa asha the first one was an asha and so we kept going worse and worse and worse to a point where we actually when you come to this farm you'll think we are beef farmers because the bulls that we're using are our neighbors which were beef beef cows yes. so how was it changing the climatic condition i'm looking at kinangop is a very cold area mm-hmm. This is Yokimau Machakos County. Mm-hmm. Arid and semi-arid area. Mm-hmm. How was that climatic change? Did it really affect that cow? Definitely. In fact, like uh, when we were when the cow, I think also one thing that happened, 2001 and 2002 were very rainy years in Yokimau. Again, so we tend to have that part where it's like we tulifichwa ukweli by even the climate. So ngombe imekuja inatoa maziwa vizuri and uh, there is a, a good climatic period like the march and the november rains almost came together and in between was the july period so 2001 2002 was actually not so bad in terms of like the weather but then after 2002 that's when now we can say the real climate came out and that's one of the reasons why that cow actually we had to put her down because she could not handle the heat she became too weak even to walk around the soil here is black cotton soil very hard during the hot period walking became so difficult for her and subsequently we just kept going down and down in terms of like the quality that we could offer those cows again they were sleeping together with the sheep and the goats <laughs> everything was together i mean it was just very 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 difficult where did the, the whole uh... The, 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 we were to call it the whole revolution of that idea. At what point did it start to to change? Eh? And what were these changes that were made? I think uh, going about maybe nine years ago or something like that, as my late mother uh, was also teaching herself, she was learning a lot about farming and uh, what cows eat. She became more and more inquisitive. And she would call me that time, I think... Uh, I was actually working in the city and she'll call me and say oh this this weekend I'm going to a certain dairy farm in Thika I'm going to a certain dairy farm in Gidungori come with me let's go and see because by that time we had like some few cows their production was not really good and we were struggling a lot mastitis all those challenges that farmers usually have and so we now said let's take time and go around and see what what other people are doing and So by the time that she passed on about eight years ago, we had some idea of what is done. But still, the, I, I think we had, like, I can say we had some answers, but not the formula to get the answers. So we'll know things like um, maize better than napier, but not why. We'll know things like cotton seed cake better than uh, maize jam, or better than bran, but not why. So I think... That's why I say maybe eight years ago we said now the real dairy farming. That's when we said now dwell, deep, uh, diving more and more into the information. And also now started thinking like, oh, I can't, we can't keep using our neighbor's bulls. You know, we need to use AI. And At what point, uh, which year, the farm started in uh, 2000, mm-hmm. which year did you start now to use the, the artificial insemination? I think AI might have been about 11 years later, because even we couldn't get somebody to come. That there. is in 2011. Yes, because there was nobody, even getting, somebody, you'll tell somebody to come, there was no road, and uh, and, the, and maybe the cow, uh, the AM, PM rule is about maybe 7 p.m., 8 p.m., hakuna njia. 
uh, our viewer might be wondering what you are talking because uh, the place now it's uh, well populated the road network is nice actually from the high wall to up to this farm it's all tarmac mm -hmm. maybe there's something you you told us uh, behind the and you tell us how those years you would give direction like mm -hmm. you know like nowadays i only need to go to the google map mm -hmm. and uh, house of hope mm -hmm. Yokimau. Mm -hmm. I have the pin I'll mm -hmm. just come here. There is something you try to describe how you describe to your visitors. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell the viewer to have a clear picture of how the situations were. Well, back in the day I think when uh, even we first even purchased the land that was now maybe 23 years ago and we started building when we brought the first cow. Uh from the highway we were on this road we were the fifth homestead. 7 kilometers. There was nobody in between here. There was nobody. We we would we had zebras here, giraffes. We had uh, even leopards. We were this was a, like a game park, so it was a very much deserted place. And so when you talk about things like AI, talk about a vet coming on time, even just somebody accessing here was a problem. And so it really hindered so many of that thing. So we'll know about AI is better than using a bull, but where do we get that person? There's a that kind of description you told us uh, you'll come and see a homestead, no yo yo nyumba ikonama but ya red. Then keep on coming, you yes. do like another two kilometers, there is no homestead. You know, somebody, make another exactly. call. Because somebody will come and they drive like three kilometers, there's nothing they're seeing. And they say, I'm Limepotaya. You're like, what can you see? They say, far away I can see a Mabatiya red and a white. I'm here, yes keep coming you're on the right track because somebody will drive you know like for seven kilometers you can actually you'll actually drive up to our homestead and there was no person you have seen no car that you have passed so you can imagine how remote it was and even just imagining how far like my late mother will have come to even think about putting cows and she kept buying she bought several cows and i remember at some point you know she was able like to run you know like have enough milk for herself and even for, I mean, for our, for our, our kids here. And she started selling to neighbors a little bit because she could have just slightly more. But all of that, as I said, was us doing things without the real science behind it. How many kilometers from here to, to the Nairobi CBD? Because I'm trying to put a picture of how there was a big opportunity or someone might think uh, oh by that time in year 2000 putting a dairy farm in Sokimau you have the Nairobi CBD maybe you could call a, ve a veterinary from all the way from mm. the Nairobi CBD. how many kilometers from here to Nairobi I CBD? I think in essence you CBD to the Sokimau junction is about 25 or 26 kilometers and then coming in another seven so you can see if somebody was to charge you mileage and things like that and and that also that time the road was very bad there's actually no good road so what uh, you'll find like it will i remember one time i came from I, I drove from narumoro to the highway at that junction and i took more time from that junction to this homestead Seven it was kilometers. raining yes so you're getting you can stuck and everything, everything. So you can imagine, like, how would you call like a vet to come and you know? And uh, how are you handling the issues of diseases back then? Okay, artificial insemination, of course, uh, it's time bound. Yes, yes. But a disease, you have to. Well, even that was even one of the major challenges that we used to have. We had also, we still had people who would try it, and I think maybe you had. Uh, we say in sometimes you have like in agrovets they have people who would be. What people tend to think they are, might, they are uh, veterinaries, but maybe they are not. And I think we used to rely a lot on some of those young guys. They will come because no one else is coming around here. So they'll find somebody who will uh, struggle. Labda kona ka bike kake, anafika hapa hivi, anatuangalia ngombe. And I think also that time we also had some few staff who had worked in dairy farms before. And so we would buy uh, medicines and self-medicate. And you can imagine it was getting worse and worse as the years were going on. But as progress came, as more and more people came on board, uh, families moved in, people built, and at least the place opened up, at least those services started coming in. And that's why I say like maybe in the after 10 years, like about 
2011, we could say at least there could be some, we had some progress behind that. What is this progress that uh, you started to see in that year of around 2010, 2011? Um, as I said, we could at least now call somebody to come and do AI and they could get here. We could at least uh, have a vet who would come and check on the cows and, you know, and uh, we would at least, we will not, things like mastitis will now be handled much better. Things like uh, just normal diseases that before were crippling us so much. But now at least we had that accessibility. I think lacking a road and lacking all that uh, minimize accessibility. And that was what was giving us many challenges. But once we have uh, people, service providers able to come, and I, I think so. And I think that's when now we even decide looking at it in terms of like, now this can be a project. Not only just to give us milk for our school, because also around that time also our school had grown to a point where again the cows are not able to give us enough milk. So you will still buy powdered milk from KCC and uh, supplement what you are giving. Uh, how was the school population now? Uh, if you are to compare now the 2000 and the 2010, yeah, mm -hmm. and the v versus the number of cows in 2000, which was one cow mm -hmm. in 2010, how many cows? So that you can say that the milk wasn't enough for. for well, we had about uh, by 2010, we had about 100 kids, and we had about maybe 10 cows. And at one time, we'll be milking maybe four or five. Again, the lactation. How many long. liters from those four or five cows? Um, Actually, we will probably maybe do maybe an average of about 15, 20 per cow. We're actually not doing so bad. I think that we, we started getting good progress on feeding and did horribly on breeding because you'll have long lactations. I remember I was looking at the records and you'll see a cow has been milked. Uh, you're, you're doing like two years before between a cow giving birth and giving the calving birth interval is two like years two years two and a half years so maybe to have you it means if a cow gave birth today you count two more years from before it gives birth again. before it gives birth again yes because you are losing like two generations exactly, there. exactly. and actually the first one opt to be calving down exactly so it's like three four and then generations you can forget totally about us having calves that become reach an age of giving birth because our calves would probably get by two years they've never come on heat they're the size of like a six-month calf because we didn't know how to feed them. They are not growing. So we'll like that's also another feature that uh, hallmark of that time that we would rarely, if ever, have a calf born here, also giving birth. All the time we would have to buy to buy to add to the production because all these calves we will not discard them. We'll keep them, look after them, but then because we don't know how to do it, by two years' time the calf is. Maybe what? Maybe around 300 kilograms, 350 kilograms if at best, and she has never come on heat. And so, the time if by the time one of them gives birth, she's like three years. And when she's giving birth, she'll give like two liters or three liters. So again, that's a <laughs> wasted investment. Yeah. So how, how was the feeding uh, back then in year 2000, the 2010? Um, Napier, mainly Napier, mainly uh, Napier and and hay. Uh, we had na the green fodder was napier when it rains, maybe like two or three months a year. Much of the other period was dry, uh, dry hay. We would have uh, there are some villages down uh, past our place where we would go and buy the harvested uh, uh, maize stalks, the, the dry ones. We come and uh, keep them maybe in somewhere and we chop a little bit, pour some molasses. The major thing was we want the cow to eat. Uh, just want it to become soft enough because again you see we went with the, the seasons when it is just like how many farmers are tuki wakati tunajifundisha wakati kuna kiangazi kuna maziwa mvoi nakuja napia iko mingi tunakuwa na kamaziwa kidogo yeah. uh, there is this class of farmers I like calling them the or this class of cows I like calling them the AA cows they are fed on AA feed, mm -hmm. anything available. Yes, yes, yes. If there is nothing, yes, that is how. And uh, we have been desperate here. We have come from desperate times where we will have nothing actually to feed a cow, and we would have to seek. As I said, uh, I remember one Christmas time around 20, 2009 or two thousand and ten. One Christmas time, 
we had to drive with a pickup all the way to Rongai to look for emergency hay because Christmas your Christmas period we didn't have any food for the cows nothing there is so we bought hay we came to tunaeka tunakatakata tunaguzisha molasses just so those cows can eat something because even planning we didn't know how to plan and tunastukia kwamba you know we know tukutanyesha November kutanyesha December then mvua inakosa kunyesha what was despite all, the, all these challenges what was this that was driving you to still pump more money into into this uh, loss making business one of the things was uh, my late mother and i truly believed in having a dairy farm i don't think it was so much about the profitability of it but we needed a dairy farm we needed milk for the for the kids in our school and i think maybe that was the first point where we started from by having that i think we would uh, now think about uh, I, i don't think the issue of money ever came about it was always about can we get milk and so all problems just were just uh, barely were more of like hurdles to jump and we believe next day kutakuwa kuzuri tutapata mazuri takuwa mingi now i agree with you that uh, the following day will be better because uh, definitely the farm now looks much better mm-hmm. how has been the journey since now the 2010 i think that's when uh, your mother died mm-hmm. sorry for the loss thank you um since 2010 up to date what was this a revolution that you brought in that has really jump started the farm to where it is i invested a lot in uh, information not only for myself but for my team we started seeking information what is this that other people do um i think one of the things that i also went through at around the time of my mom, mother's demise is like i now went into the hype i found myself in the hype of these things that people do which uh usually they can give you a cow milk but they're not really profit making so i remember scrapping off all the napier here removing it and uh, planting like sunflower planting uh, a lot of uh, maybe sweet potato vines and some of them were good but the basic fodder the base fodder for cows that a cow needs to eat there was not there so you find that we find we found ourselves with a lot of challenges concerning even cows just having enough food um cows now relied more on concentrates and supplements so we again shifted to the 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 dairy farmers that uh, are usually mainly focused on the the models that we sometimes follow erroneously where cows mainly now it's unga sasa ikule unga and yes we could see oh this cow is doing 20 liters this cow is doing 25 liters but all the time there's no money to buy feed mm-hmm. all the money have to go back And so again from there now to making it uh we now got information I started getting getting people who could uh, help me with information I've always said uh, much respect to Bonawili Kea he came here we did said, have some very nice dairy journey for Willy Kea yes I saw that recently it was a very nice one uh, who, the only farmer who started dairy farming <laughs> with manure he needed manure <laughs> I was very interested in that. I said he, he kept and cows. He started uh, and dairy farm manure. See, and he started looking for milk eh, yes. for the kids. Exactly. And so, to save on their journey. Yes. So I remember we really came to Kongea Kidogo. Which year? I think that was about 23 2014 or 2015. In the really care journey he said uh, because that was the same year mm-hmm. he had a lot of troubles in his dairy farm mm-hmm. he said he read a lot a lot and he started to extend hand mm-hmm. yes. to other farmers I so you are among the beneficiaries I would believe of... probably one of the earliest people that you will be visiting and talking to I got to know him because um we had now reached a point where we we needed to buy some few cows and I got to know Patrick Ruto Yeah. and uh, Patrick Ruto in, now I called him I told him I have a few problems nimenunua ngombe kutoka kwako na sijui kuzilisha and then because I bought a few cows from him and then because again of AI challenges I went and bought a bull a young bull from <laughs> uh, Baraka farm Eldoret from Eldoret we brought a bull here uh, the you can call him the son of uh, Delta stylist and breeding skyrocketed like we got so many heifers and again our farm just went down because we didn't have food so we worked first of all to get numbers of cows now cows have come and now we don't have food <laughs> and that's now the problem that came about so i called him and i told him sasa ngombe ulinipatia nikapata bull nimepata watoto wengi hapa hivi heifers imejaa 
Mimi sijui mambo ya chakula. Kanambia let me give you number ya wili. Wili came and I always remember we stood where my chef cutter is and he held up his hand and he said energy proteins minerals water fiber and it's like pff, something opened up he said that and i started reading about that and i was like oh that's how it works and i was like if i knew this long time ago nikuwa mbali but everything has its own time so once now i started understanding that then later on i came to realize something called body condition so the cow needs to be in good body condition to do all the things that it's supposed to do for the interest of our viewer what do you mean by the body condition the you know i can uh, we have one of uh, <laughs> the director there eh? <laughs> uh, as a side hustle she does uh, the, the the she does this uh, the makeup uh, whatever so maybe someone might think the body condition is all about <laughs> applying the makeup and just well, looking decent body condition is how healthy your cow is and you can see that by like how i don't use the word fat but how like your cow is not skinny your cow is not excessively fat your cow is a good dairy cow that is bones are not showing and that means that she's in good health to not only give you milk but do other processes like um like being in uh, like having a good uh, lactation breeding well and also fighting diseases So once I started learning about some of those things that's when now things started moving now and I will come and share with my people I will go get literature I come and share up to this day whenever I go outside there and I get a, a book I come and give my people tell them read see what I'm getting and so once you say like uh, reading about that and realized what it means for a cow to be in good body condition what it means for a cow to eat well and what it's supposed to eat and again one of the other things that uh, I learned that time quality food all the time because again you know i i've come from that area where sometimes i think we'll feed the cow once in the morning and when, when in akula for uh, yes yes and akula subui nafika sa sa tatu hivi mpaka kesho to feeding them eat hii kidogo hii masa na hii masa ingine to now to a point where i came to realize oh i'm supposed to have that trough having something to eat feed is supposed to be available in that trough all the time unless ilo wakati naosha hiyo trough and when i looked at that i asked myself can i do that for all these cows that i have should i sell some cows so i had two options either sell the cows or find a way to feed them so me and my wife to karudi kwa bank and we cleared all the money in the accounts and we invested in building structures the silage na tukaanza kununua silage which year did you now start to do this uh, silage silage we started doing it around 2016 we planted our maize and we chopped it ourselves very difficult process kukata huko kubeba before you go to this uh, aspect of uh, doing the chopping there's something of much interest you have said feed cows quality fodder mm. what do you mean by quality i can just produce my own uh, napier there let it uh, probably grow tall mm-hmm. maybe i can produce my own like a uh, few days ago i was having a conversation with a farmer who told me i have quality silage mm-hmm. i have grown it myself but upon visiting the farm it was all rotten mm-hmm. so i told him the reality is you are feeding quality maize silage but it's a quality rotten may mm-hmm. sign it mm-hmm. what is this you are calling the quality um again the five parts you want your cow to have a balanced diet it has food that gives it good quality proteins so all feeds would have proteins in various levels but there are feeds that will pack up a lot more proteins feeds that pack up more energy then you cows need water cows need a little bit of fiber and you need to buy some minerals for your cows so when you talk about a complete diet especially when you're talking about proteins and energy you need to ask yourself for my cows to get the correct amount of levels of proteins and energy what can i grow for my cows and if what i can grow is not adequate what could i buy to supplement that and i'm talking about fodder not concentrates or supplements fodder because i am a fodder based farmer mimi naamini kwamba ngombe inapaswa kukula chakula ile ya like matavi kama ni mahindi ama ni napia what the trick is getting what works for you financially what you can buy at a good price and what you can acquire maybe or what you can grow 
there's something you are saying about the year 2016 you have grown your own maze here uh you have done your own silage you're explaining how difficult that was mm-hmm. yes so what happened is that uh, in 2016 um we had we grew our own maize and we got machines we were told that this can make quality uh, uh silage machines that will chop it quickly and will you know uh, move us faster into making the silage but that was not the real story chopping it bringing it from the farm to here carrying it because the farm is just down here but bringing it all the way upside uh, here cut cutting it labda steam imepotea tunatumia kama ni diesel kama ni which, ma- which is this machine uh, that you bought we had uh, some of them just choppers uh, different choppers that you get from some of these suppliers we would uh, use choppers that either kama ni steam unapata inafika pahali moto inakuwa moto steam inapotea ama kama ni petroli it vibrates so much it breaks up and so we have a lot of wastage of silage unapata like kama ni one cube ambayo tunataka kuweka maybe 10000 kg tumeweka maybe 2000 na machine zote zimeharibika so inabidi kwanza kutengeneza tukokuja tunafungua kisha kuwekelea juu in the end by the time you are finishing it that silage is not decent ile siku tutafungua yote imeoza it's not good quality and there you go so at uh, that 2016 making silage was a big challenge big big challenge although now you can see we are in the right direction we know that we need silage So that's when now But how to is a challenge. Yes. So by keeping on talking to people, discussing with people, then we now came to realize oh kumbe there are people who can come and do this for you or there are people who can do it you can outsource it na kuja ikiwe mesiagoa. Those type of things. Now by and then also the quality. Kama imekatakatwa na tractor why it is so good ikiwa ndogo hivyo uh, why it would uh, be more nutritious and kwa nini haitaharibika more compaction All those things I think we had to go through all that for us to be who we are today. Are you still focusing on just the school? Um or you have an alternative by market? Now, yeah. There's this particular year that uh, you uprooted the whole Napier you did maize that was still in 2016. 